There are many resources you can look up to verify this fact. Judges assume pro se litigants are self-represented out of choice, and they complain that pro se litigants disrupt the efficiency of the judiciary due to inadequate case preparation and inability to understand and follow court procedures. Unfortunately, some judges seek to punish pro se litigants, and I found out the hard way that no matter how closely I followed the rules and statutes, the judge made sure I lost in a big way by falsifying minute entries, ignoring motions, conducting ex party meetings and emails with opposing counsel, accepting into evidence altered public documents from CPS. The list is very long of the judge's misconduct, but in this short video, I can't prove my entire case, so instead, I will just show a few uh, rather comical examples of the absurdity in action. And believe it or not, this judge was promoted to presiding family court judge this past summer, 2010, and she is currently on the ballot of a re-election. Why, why are we here? A question I thought you'd ask, Judge. May, you want me to sit? Oh, please Every do, because I it, end, yeah. I hear that you can't hear. Yeah, me. I have no evidence. I have no evidence before me. I have no evidence at this moment about anything. Uh, I, I'm still kind of at a little bit of a loss with respect to why we're here with a 17 and a half year old who seems pretty um, great. This, we're, I can't take any of this information now. Do you agree that she should have sole physical custody today? No. If I need to set an evidentiary hearing within the next 30 days by statute and rule, mm -hmm. which I can do. We've got an hour on, where are we? August or July? Okay, sorry. July, I need July. Oh, there's no time. Three hours, 11.32, three hours, 29. Maybe I have the wrong order. Let's see. I'm very confused. The court, um, Tom, did we ever find that contempt petition? Well, I know we did have a copy at one time that came in recently, and we set this also just for a return on that. But I couldn't find it in the docket, and I couldn't find it in our stack of paperwork. And that's something also that you filed, Mr. Zan, because it wasn't filed as a judgment for the other state, the modification was? Okay, can I have the the one that's current? Because the one I was looking at was old, I ne guess. Neither of model, our models of clarity, Judge, but let me hand it to you. Okay. Here, we'll be. I'm more concerned with you than stepmom, because I, 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 I doubt my jurisdiction over her. Um, my jurisdiction is really over you, of course. Um, if she okay. doesn't comply either, then your daughter can't live there. <laughs> your daughter can't live there. <laughs> Your daughter can't live there. Her allegations are the same as your allegations. I need some proof of this. And so it may very well be that I'll order her to test randomly too, but right now I'm going to just keep it in place, random weekly tests for you and your wife. You must do that. If you do not do that, I will grant her motion and sole custody will go to mom. I need test results. And I have some concerns about the drug testing that was ordered for instance, uh, the part that Jane be tested at the, at a location and time according to the mothers. Um, oh. Well, first she never gave us the information to take Chris to do, to do the drug testing. That was in the previous order by yeah. Commissioner yeah. Benny. Is that no longer about, uh, no, no longer I don't uh, remember. Ordered? Did I say something different? Let's see. Um, Uh, I guess I just affirmed the previous order, but I, I don't remember. May I help you, Judge? Yeah. Do you find it somewhere? Yeah, it's it's in your most recent order. I don't think you addressed. Uh, there were a few differences between what you ordered um, at the hearing and and what your minute entry says. Oh. It, uh, there were a few differences between what you ordered um, at the hearing and and what your minute entry says. Oh, this lady right here, right? No. Oh, she wasn't ordered to test? Okay, yeah, I'm not sure what I did with it. I know I had it somewhere. Oh, maybe it's in back. Okay, I, so, it would be advisable if you would concentrate on your own conduct before you start um, shifting the blame to somebody else because you are the only person in this courtroom 
who is violating repeatedly court orders. Well, Sue is also violating our visitation schedule repeatedly all last year. Do, I'm sorry, did you just hear me? Okay. I'm As I think it, you need to start concentrating on your actions because her actions are not at issue. Your actions are. Let's see. What did I do with my calendar? Was it uh, Commissioner? Um, maybe I'm getting my cases confused. Mr. Zanon, I know, I know you filed something, <laughs> and for the life of me, I have misplaced it with respect to um, continuing this hearing. The other things that are pending today is the motion by the best interest attorney, who is Carol Coughlin Carter, because the court neglected to make any kind of assessment or findings regarding the party's incomes to determine if this should be on um, the expense of the Office of Public Defense or whether the parties will be sharing the costs. I don't see any income information in what I've been provided, so I was planning on asking um, both sides what is uh, what the income issues are. Um, if we don't have, have no idea. But do you have any idea how much money he makes? I don't judge up. My understanding is he had a job, um, claimed to have fallen asleep at the at the wheel, got in an accident, and was either discharged or resigned. Um, I don't have income information for him. I know he claims not to have significant assets. I don't really know what that means exactly. Okay. And told me that the, he lives in a uh, relatively new home in Anthem, right? That's down the street from his parents' home or something, their, their his, summer home? Yeah, his folks have a house in Anthem, and he lives in Anthem as well. Okay. And you don't have any information as to whether he, that's new, old, used, released, yeah. owned? Um, they own it, and they've been living there since summer 2003. Oh, okay. Okay. Then based upon the testimony of both parties on this issue, I'm going to order that... Um, the bulk of the fees be paid by the Office of Contract Counsel, but that each parent needs to contribute $500 um, to the cost of the BIA services. And I guess she's going to, she'll have to tell you whether that's, I don't know if that goes directly to Office of Contract Counsel or to her, but I'm sure she'll know that. So her motion for an assessment is granted. The parties are. Um, nearly indigent and can only contribute a limited amount, $500 each, so she can get started. I I'll, I'll be brief and succinct. I thought I was going to have to refresh your memory about the case, but you obviously remember it real well. Uh, <laughs> I've seen you all a couple of times. Yes, three times now, Judge, and it's three times now, Judge, and it's three times now, Judge, and it's, it's the same thing every time, same thing every time, time, time. time. At, at 1.30 on that? I thought I said something. I can't find it on my calendar. Well, that should be enough time for the best interest attorney get, to give us some information, I would think. Um, so both parties are directed you need to cooperate with the best interest attorney with respect to providing her with information so she can do a report for the court by September. Um, since that time, we received a, a, a message from Ms. Carter, which I'll, I'll paraphrase rather than simply read. Um, this comes from my paralegal um, who, who spoke with Ms. Carter uh, yesterday afternoon. Um, she will not be participating in today's hearing. She wants to withdraw and close her file. The Office of Public Defender Services will not recognize Judge Hyatt's minute entry regarding her appointment because in order for OPDS to appoint uh, counsel, both parents must be indigent and there must be allegations of abuse. Judge Hyatt's minute entry states each parent is to pay $500, which was a red flag to OPDS, implying they're not indigent. Uh, Ms. Uh, Carter indicates there is no provision in the contract with OPDS to, quote, share, end quote, fees. Ms. Carter is frustrated with the case. She said calling her to be interviewed. However, uh, Dad hasn't coughed up her, her, her language, the retainer. Uh, even if he did, $1,000 is hardly sufficient to pay her fees. Uh, Ms. Carter is frustrated trying to educate various judges uh, about uh, how the office of the OPDS works. 
Um, and then she has a suggestion, and her suggestion is that I recommend to you that the court either enter a finding that both parents are indigent and there exist allegations of abuse, obviously if appropriate, uh, or that an attorney from the court's pro bono roster be appointed. Um, Ms. Carter doesn't have any intention of proceeding forward with the case when she has no prospect of getting paid. Okay. And that's the end of Ms. Carter's message. All right. Well, I'm not willing to use Ms. Car Carter no matter if she was probably the last BIA on the planet because I'm more than doubly frustrated with her in her attitude towards this case and also she she refuses to contact the court <laughs> after okay but it's an evidentiary hearing so I need you here if you can't do that date oh me yes um 20 would a Friday be Second better day. for you um Friday is fine I mean what well, I just don't have my calendar in front of me so um Certainly the 4 p.m. time slot's great. 3.30, you mean? 3.30's fine. Okay. So 9.11, anything else? Judge, the only other thing is, uh, obviously I want to reserve my right to submit a China doll application for attorney's fees. Sure. I'm sure that'll abide the hearing. Yeah. Was that the last hearing date? Yeah, that's right. Yes. Um, and on that date, uh, if my memory serves, um, I also got a I thought I had a recent one that you just handed me Tom I must have left it in the office okay um, you know uh, did I swear them in the two parties you no? didn't could, could I get both of the parties to stand raise their right hands and be sworn it's not contempt to not see your child. It's contempt to violate the court order by seeing your child outside the court ordered time. So the there's no contempt against mother.